What's up guys, Jay here with Solo IGO. Welcome to the channel if you're new. Before we get into today's opening and reveal of the Crimson King structure deck, as well as like a little review of the quality and overall what we like and dislike, um, I wanna remind you to check out the channel memberships and Patreon down below. It really helps us out, it's really not that expensive. I think the lowest tier is like a dollar, right after that's two bucks. Just get your name on the intro and then also uh, uh, get into the Discord, which is cool. We've been talking there every day. And then um, that helps with the channel giveaways as well. Speaking of which, this month we're giving away two of these boxes. So I have them in display back there just to let you guys see them. And all you have to do to qualify for that is like the video, comment, and subscribe, of course. But the comment, we're going to do the daily question, which is, what is your favorite structure deck released as of late? For me, it's going to be the Crystal Beast one. Um, and we'll get into... We'll get into this. You can obviously see some immediate size differences right away. So, but yeah, for me, it's the Crystal Beast. Wasn't a great structure deck, but it did uh, give support to one of my favorite archetypes of all time. There was the Gladiator Beast and the Crystal Beast. So, um, one of them was competitive, one of them was just super rogue for me. And uh, I liked all the beasts. So, yep. All right, guys, let's get straight into it. Um, so, this is the Crimson King structure deck. It was just released a week or two ago. Uh, it's got new Red Dragon Archfiend support. Obviously, it's based off of Jack Atlas from Yu-Gi-Oh! 5Ds. Um, yeah, let's just get straight into it. Before we open it, though, again, I'll show you that there's an obvious discrepancy here. Not necessarily discrepancy, but just something majorly different from previous structure decks is the size of the box. Just phenomenally smaller on the part of the new one. Um, you could speculate and say it's Konami trying to be environmentally friendly, which I don't know about that, but it could be a reason. Uh, or it could be them just trying to save money on the cost of the packing of the structure decks, which I would think is the more likely reason. Uh, not only does it save them money, but they get to charge us the same thing uh, and then essentially not have to raise the prices as fast because they're saving money on that end, which I'm okay with as long as they're packed safely. So with that being said, uh, this was shipped to Baby Ruben, so shout out to Baby Ruben. We're gonna see how, and it came in a one bubble mailer, so we're gonna see how the Crimson King structure deck, compared to the previous ones, which I never had an issue with, as far as them being shipped, does when it's opened, based on having a far less minimal packaging. All right, let's see what we got here. Oh, will open up and look at this mat, and then it looks like we got, what is that? Is it, oh, I don't know what that was about. Some kind of layer in there preventing me from getting it open. All right, so this is literally, wow, wow, this is, oh my God, I don't remember it being like this. It's literally just the deck chilling inside the box. And there's some weird layers here. I guess they were trying to hold it in place, but everything looks fine. Everything looks fine. Uh, no immediate damage detected. Um, also, the ultra rare on the front doesn't look all dinged up. It's notoriously had bad edges on the front ultra rare. Every set for the last few sets. There actually might be a little bit of whitening there in the corner, but we'll take a closer look once we get into it. Let's take a look at this mat first. Let's see if we need the artwork here. I'm gonna back up the camera for you guys for a second. Oops. There we go. A little bit more. Uh, that's pretty cool. Um, obviously, Red Dragon Archfiend or some kind of variant of him. I'm not su super familiar with the archetype. <laughs> when I was playing this card, it was like the OG Red Dragon Archfiend uh, back in Edison format. Like, and for us, we just called that our childhood. There was no Edison format, so. Yeah, it looks like maybe a variant of him. That's pretty cool. All right. Be nice to have a cloth mat version of that. Now let's actually open up the actual structure deck. Uh, a little bit of... Okay, let me see. It's got a little thing here to rip it. Okay. So it's got a little thing to rip it in case you guys see it. It makes it a lot easier. Be gentle with these. Thanks again to Baby Ruben. Uh, we'll have to get two more of these to make a deck for the channel. So Soul Resonator. 
If this card is no more special summon, you can add one level 4 lower fiend monster from your deck to your hand except soul resonator. Also, you can add special monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn except dark synchro monsters. If a card you control will be destroyed by card effects while you control red dragon archfiend or a synchro monster that mentions it, you can banish this card from your graveyard instead. You can only use each effect of soul resonator once per turn. Okay. And then there's vision resonator. We're not going to read them all. And then an ultra rare red dragon archfiend. That's really cool. Um, that's nice. I mean, this is nice in general, just for Edison format right now. Maybe that's why they're releasing this Red Rising Dragon. Because the rise in popularity of Edison, they're just kind of trying to do some old support for that era. Because they're probably seeing how popular that era is. Everyone's King. This is really cool. It says this card cannot be used in a duel. So it's not a token, is it? No, it's not a token. I did see mention of this. Let's get a little closer on the camera. It reads, a foolish king once forsook his land and friends, but his scared soul, sorry, but his scarred soul was saved by a compassionate heart. That's probably you say. Uh, he who was determined to live his own destiny shall save the world and become the true king, giver of happiness and loved by all. That's cool. A little, little dedication to Jack Atlas there. Human type. That's probably the first one of these I've ever seen. That's a cool card. That's really cool. I'll be getting some more of these, so I'll probably be able to get give this back to Baby Ruben if he likes it too. Let me know if you want this Baby Ruben. Otherwise, we'll use it for tokens here on the channel. First, so that's all the ultra rares. Red Rising Dragon. Let me know which one of these are new and old. Obviously, this is old, but uh, I'm not super familiar. Red Supernova Dragon. Hot Red Dragon Archfiend Calamity. Scare Scar Dragon Archfiend. And you know what? This might be an inaccurate, uh, what you call it, review of a set because what I'm noticing based off the texture of these cards, and you can try to feel it as well. These almost feel like a Euro printing. In fact, they do. They're very smooth, very smooth surface. And what we know about Euro printing, typically a little, little darker coloring. You can, yeah, you can definitely tell this is Euro, 100%. A um, little darker coloring, so, and also we know that the quality is much better, which is why I'm seeing that these are perfect around the edges and everything. So, again, um, might have to. I'll let you guys know that at some other point in another video, if uh, the North America one is of equivalent, you know, basically quality control. But we'll see. So, we have Bone Arch Fiend, Dark Resonator. Creation Resonator. Uh, we got Synchron Resonator, a lot of Resonators. Red Resonator. Crimson Resonator. We got the whole Resonator Brigade there. We got Vice Dragon. Battle Fader, cool little staple for Edison format. Completely garbage by today's standards, but you know how they do it with the structure decks. They try and give you some good cards, some good support, some good new stuff, and then pretty much have to put all three structure decks together otherwise uh, you're gonna be stuck with a lot of cards that you typically wouldn't put in regardless and then um, you might also have to put in some previous support but we'll make that happen for you guys so if you guys want to stick around and see a red dragon archfiend deck profile uh, we're definitely gonna do that now red sprinter red warg wandering king whirl whirl wild sorry wild wind i remember when this guy what was it an ultra rare or a super rare he was like 12 or 15 bucks just expensive for no reason maybe because it was only printing he ended up getting an ultra out reprinting out of ghosts from the past two and it brought him down but yeah the guy needed a reprint forever uh, phantom king hydride magical king moonstar absolute king backjack reprint red dragon archfiend assault mode i think i had this as like an ultra rare as a kid this was such a failed arc or such a failed uh, mechanic it's not even funny it's just completely impractical assault beast i guess this was like I mean, he's not a bad beater. 1900, you can just normal summon, worst case, if you don't want to discard him for his effect. Psy Reflector. Fire Ant Escator. Escator Dawnwalker. So a lot of reprints here. Oh, Danger Nessie, that's a good one for sure. It needed a reprint really badly, then it got it out of Battles Legend Monsters Revenge as a secret rare. And then I guess they're just hammering it home to make sure it really doesn't need a reprint again with this common here. Typically they'll do that. I remember when Ash was 30 bucks and then they gave it like three reprints in a row to make sure that <laughs> that card was good to go for a while. Yeah, I remember because I 
bought a bunch and they reprinted it again. Sad face. Uh, Danger Chupacabra. That's the nature of the game. Witch of the Black Forest. Not good for any old format that's popular because it's banned, but Absolute Power Force. Okay, we're starting to get into the Red Dragon support. Crimson Gaia. Cool. Resonator Engine. Resonator Call. That's a good one. Add, res add one Resonator monster from your deck to your hand. Uh, Resonator Command. Burning Soul. Pot of Extrav. Good reprint, good staple. Uh, the last time this was reprinted was also as a common. Back in structure deck, Albaz Strike, which came out last year. So it's been, um, actually it's been over a year, a year and a half almost since that reprint. Fiendish Golem, Red Zone, King Synchro, Red Rain, Time to Stand Up, Fiendish Chain. Okay, this actually came out of uh, Absolute Power Force, which if you remember had the Red Dragon Archfiend on the front of it, so. Or, unless I'm mistaken. Let me know down below. I'm pretty sure it did. Uh, a A B P F, that that uh, code for that set, Absolute Power Force. But yeah, Phoenix Chain, good card. It wasn't really as practical in uh, Edison, considering there's a lot of back row removal and stuff like that. A lot of popping stuff, and there was a lot of like stuff like Raiko and Kaiku around, or sorry, Kaius around. I could just kind of out stuff like this. But it did see a lot of plain hat format, as Max introduced us to, so. We'll have to throw that aside for that. All right, Powerful Rebirth. Assault Mode Activator. I remember seeing tons of these in the bulk bin as a kid, looking through the bulk in the local comic book store. Tears of the Overroot. So it looks like now they have, unless I'm mistaken, this the OG reprinting was, sorry, the OG printing was a common, right? Out of one of the sets that came out last year. And they just reprinted this in the 2023 tins, as we saw a couple days ago. And now they reprint as a common again. Such a good card. That's got three common printings now. What's up with that? But yeah, I guess. Uh, Scarlight, Red Dragon, Archfiend. Okay, that's cool. That's the one that actually needed to reprint. And they made it really accessible as a common here. So nice to see that. Uh, Hot Red Dragon, Archfiend, Abyss. So they're kind of nailing down some of the stuff as commons. Red, Red Nova Dragon and Hot Red Dragon, Archfiend, Bane. So that's it for the actual cards. Again, unfortunately, this is probably a Euro box, so I can't really give you guys an accurate evaluation as far as the quality control goes because Euro is just amazing with their stuff. So um, I can ask, well, Ruben, go ahead and put down the name of the store down below in the comments that you bought it from on TCG. Uh, and maybe people can order from the same one and get some Euro boxes. Plug them a little bit for giving some good quality stuff because I'm tired of getting the first card of every structure deck that would have normally a crap ton of whitening around the edges and just kind of be beat up. This is good stuff, so. Overall, I give the structure deck maybe like a, God, what's a great structure deck as of late? Probably the Brandon and the Trap Checks, right? As far as being playable and then being meta changing and kind of just being a budget way of anybody becoming instantly somewhat competitive. Um, I mean, that's the things I look for in a structure deck. Uh, budget which it always is and then kind of allowing a new player to come in and you know somewhat be able to play I mean, I don't know how this would perform to be honest so But I can imagine it's rogue because I've heard nothing about it as far as people testing it. So um, I don't know maybe Maybe a six or a seven out of ten Maybe that's even being generous. It can't be it can't be anywhere near as bad as the crystal be structure deck But the one thing that the crystal be structure deck did that this one didn't do from what I can see is it gave us cards like Ash Blossom, Ghost Bell and Haunted Mansion, Cosmic Cyclone. I mean, there are, I think there was a few more. D Shifter, um, Contact C, that's pretty good. Um, what else? That's about it, I believe. It, oh, Foolish Burial Goods, okay. Yeah, it gave us some good staples, which is what we're missing from this set right now. If the actual cards are gonna be, you know, bad per se, I like to at least see them throw in some staples to make the value good for the consumer. Pot of extra, that wasn't really doing anything on the market as far as expensive goes because Albat Strike pretty much took care of it. I mean, I know I gave some compliments to some of the old staples, but most people like modern and it's uh, I see it from my side with what you guys like as far as content. 
And as much as we like the old stuff, the new stuff does a lot better. I can tell you that's what the community feels like as well. Um, I do like this card a lot. I think that was a cool idea. Um, I know the Crystal Beach Structure Deck put like tokens like Jesse Anderson and stuff like that. I know the Brandon one put like Ecclesia. So I, I really like that actually. I like that idea. And this one not being necessarily a token, but actually being like a game card that, a monster card that just can't be played. And it says human. I think that's really cool. But I don't know if it's cool enough to spend 10, 12 bucks on a box just to get him. Um, because he is essentially bulk at this point. Yeah, guys, maybe maybe a solid six. I don't know if I want to give it a seven. But that's it. Let me know your guys' thoughts down below, and uh, let me know if you want to see more of these in the future. We'll probably probably um, still make this deck regardless. See how it performs, so I can give you guys some better insight. Till then, we'll see you in the next one. Peace out.